We're live? Yes. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. Uh, today, I'm here with Dr. Lou Allen. And um, the reason I wanted to have this talk was because I think I've run into some patients lately who, you know, they, they may hear the term pre-cancer and some of them um, take it very lightly and, and don't make follow-up appointments. And some of them take it too seriously. And some of like, you know, if you can get take really it too anxious, seriously, yeah. get really anxious and nervous that, you know, they heard the C word in there. And so I want to talk about all things pre-cancers, what they are and all the different ways we treat them and really how serious they are. So Dr. Llewellyn, you do a lot of medical dermatology at our practice. Mm -hmm you see a lot of patients in the office for skin checks and follow-ups. Mm -hmm. So those follow-ups can consist, if you've had a skin cancer before, you're gonna be coming in probably every six months. Sure. If you've had a melanoma, you're probably gonna be coming in every three months. Yes. Those people who have actinic keratoses, which mm -hmm. are, what is an actinic keratosis? Yeah, so actinic keratosis, they're precancers of the skin. So um, they're, you know, you can grade them from one to three. The first stage of them is really you feel this like little rough area on the skin. You can't even see it. It's just something that you feel. Mm -hmm. And then as it progresses on, it becomes pink and small. Then they can progress to become pretty big, thick, like almost like horn like areas of the skin. Mm -hmm. And all of those can still be the precancerous change. But what we find is that if you leave those alone and allow them to continue to progress, they can turn into squamous cell carcinoma, which is the second most common form of skin cancer and from sun over time. So if you continue to not treat them, then they have that malignant risk that they can transition. And so, you know, when you see a patient for a regular skin check, let's say a 30 year old patient, mm -hmm. what's the likelihood of uh, you know, a fair skinned person having an actinic keratosis. Yeah, so the, the lighter your skin complexion is, your family history kind of plays a role if they're, you know, your parents or grandparents have had squamous cell. If you've lived in California the whole time and are laying out at the beach, then it's possible even in your 30s to get an actinic keratosis. Um, and then the more actinic keratosis you have, the more likely you are to get squamous cell. Um, the kind of malignant transformation, it depends on what literature you look at, but the risk is from 0.16% um, up to 16%. So depending on what study, the malignant transformation risk is possible. Um, tend to, when we see them, we do treat them. So usually we recommend a form of treatment, um, but that does mean in general, kind of the average is that there's a 2% malignant risk in the most kind of recent studies. So there's a 2% risk, that means there's like a 98% risk that, you know, it'll clear up on its own um, and a 2% malignant risk. Um, we don't like to take that chance, especially in areas on the head and neck or high risk areas. Um, and then it also tends to mean that the skin has seen its sun it wants to see in its lifetime. Um, and then any additional sun will make more tenant keratoses. The more of those you get, the more likely you are to get squamous cell at some point. So um, you said a lot there, and I mm -hmm. want to kind of reverse a little bit, because you said, um, I heard you say some could clear on their own. So mm -hmm. is, it's possible that some actinic keratoses, if left untreated, could go away on their own? I didn't know that. Yeah, so that's kind of true of all cancers, right? Otherwise, we'd always have cancers everywhere. So our bodies are making precancerous changes and cancerous changes in our body all the time. Mm -hmm. And we have DNA repair enzymes and things that combat that all the time. Mm -hmm. So that's why we're not always having lymphoma or breast cancer or other things. We're always curing ourselves. And it's the same thing with... That's kind so of, cool. Yeah. So we have repair <laughs> enzymes that are always kind of working. Okay. Um, as we get older, those repair enzymes are less functional mm -hmm. as, as the rest of us. So um, that's why you tend to see more tenant characteristics as you get older. Okay. And we're able to clear them better when we're younger. Okay. Um, but they are a sign that the DNA has been so damaged from the sun that you have breakdown and precancerous change. Mm -hmm. um, and then if your DNA repair enzymes can correct that, then it will resolve. So a lot of times it will, um, but sometimes it doesn't. And then that can be an invasive skin cancer over time. Okay. So I'm sure that if there's anyone watching, um, but I'm sure that there's people out there like myself, like I'm fortunate enough to work here and I can just be like, Hey, Dr. Llewellyn, I think this is a little something scratchy, but there's people that are like, they don't want to come to the dermatologist every you know, couple months. And mm -hmm. they probably have things that are like, um, 
you know, I'll get it next time. Mm -hmm. Is that okay? Is it okay to wait on those, those scaly patches that maybe have become red? What's yeah. a sign that they have to come in? Yeah, once they're red and you can feel them and they haven't resolved in about six weeks, then you'd want to come in. So red, scaly, especially if they bleed, definitely don't leave those. But even red and scaly, your immune system should clear them by six weeks. So if they're not, then it's probably not going to clear up on its own. The actinic keratosis can sit there for a long time and just stay as precancers. Um, but the longer you leave it, the more likely you are to fall into that 2% time frame where you're going to get a skin cancer out of that one. And I find sometimes they get a little itchy. Yeah, so they can be itchy. A little um, sore sometimes. I find a lot of times people, I'm from the south, so a lot of times people describe it as like a briar or like something, like a thorn stuck in the skin sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a sign that it tends to, you know, it's hurting the nerve center right there. So that's also a sign that it should be treated because it's starting to become a little bit more than just like a little precancer. That's just at the surface. Mm -hmm. And I mentioned, you know, people watching. Of course, if you guys have any questions, I've got Brie on the camera right now. So she can read those questions to us. I can't see them, so I don't know that you're asking them. But she can read the questions to us and, you know, um, we can answer those for you. So, okay. So you talked about actinic keratosis becoming squamous cell carcinomas. Right. If you're sitting at home and you're like, oh, my God, I don't want to get a squamous cell carcinoma. Like, that's that's going to take a long time. That's going to take... It can, or it can happen fast. Oh, goodness gracious. <laughs> I don't... I mean, there's Not people all. out there that are going to be like, wait, well, I got to get in. She said six weeks. I got, it's still here, and I can't even get them in for a few weeks. So those patients that are like... You yeah, know. you'll know if it's growing fast. So there's a variant of squamous cell keratoic anthoma, and those can pop up and arise very fast and can grow in a matter of days. Um, or you can have an actinic keratosis that's like the little rough red area. That's not urgent to come in. Once it starts, you know, getting bigger or not resolving in six weeks, then you'd want to come in. But that wouldn't be urgent that you have to come in. If you have a rapidly enlarging, like, bump that's sore, then that would be a little different. That should come in sooner. So speaking as somebody who's had a, my fair share of these things, the keratoacanthoma kind of looks like a pimple, huh? It kind of looks like that most commonly. People think it's a spider bite and it's not. Mm -hmm. um, like they've been to the emergency room, they were told it's a spider bite, and then, you know, four weeks later it's still a spider bite that's still sitting there. Um, that's usually what I get the history of. Like they come in because they, they had a rapidly and growing, like, bump that's sore, mm -hmm. um, and then they usually go to the ED first. Right. And then so let's talk about treatment. So that keratoacanthoma, for mm -hmm. example... Is it going to have to be excised? Typically with keratoid contemas, we do excise those. Okay. So, uh, a, a rapidly growing actinic keratosis that feels hard, maybe feels like a spider bite at first, could be a keratoid Yeah, instead of just an actinic keratosis precancer, it would be more likely a skin cancer. Okay. Instead. All right. So, all those people at, at home that are, like, nervous, they've got these scaly patches, what what do we do? How do we fix that? Yeah, so the first step would be to do an exam and see the number that you have. I know that you said some people like don't want to come in super frequently. If you have like one or two of tenant keratosis, then you would still just do annual exams for that. If we're freezing like 10, 15, 20 of them at a time, um, either we'll talk about continuing to freeze but see every six months or some of the other like creams or over-the-counter right. options or in-office treatments that we have that you could do mm -hmm. if you're having a lot right okay so what are those in-office treatments yeah so I think we have pictures of you <laughs> we have pictures of me <laughs> so um Carrie's had a few squamous cells so um prevention wise one of the things that we do in the office is called PDT or blue light um, PDT stands for photodynamic therapy, and then blue light's just the color of the light um, that we use. And there's um, a topical medication called amino levulonic acid that we apply. Um, we let it sit on the skin for three hours. It's a sun sensitizing chemical. It goes into rapidly dividing cells, which are those precancers. Mm -hmm. And then it causes scabs, crusts, sores, redness, inflammation, um, usually about seven days or so before you want to expose that skin um, to other people um, you have to stay out of the sun for 48 hours afterwards okay so um, I just did this I like to have 
lots of fun on my skin. Um, I did I did my left arm. Um, actually, I'm not wearing. I've got it. I'm wearing long sleeves because of this. And then um, this arm is nice and and clear now. Um, and then I did my my right arm. I'm still working on that, but I do have some like parts that are you know scabbed up and coming off. So this hopefully will get to looking like this. And um, I combined an IPL treatment because um, you can get a little bit of a cosmetic benefit. So, and then I also did my chest, which Brie has a picture of what it looks like. I did this this week. So this was on Monday. Today's yeah, Wednesday. So yeah. um, there's a picture of what it looked like immediately. Well, I guess it was the next morning that I took the picture. And then, um, you know, this is where I'm at now. So I'm keeping it covered. Um, and the benefit, I, my understanding of doing those blue lights, it's, it's a full field therapy treatment. So as opposed to getting liquid nitrogen, right? We call that like a local therapy. A local therapy on just the actinic keratosis. We do this blue light and we're, we're taking care of like what's coming up under the skin, not just what we see on the skin, right? Explain that in yeah. more yeah, so medical terms. In the office, there's certain local things that you could do. So you could do cryotherapy. So that means I see a red scaly area, I freeze it off, and that part's treated. But I don't treat the surrounding area that has years of sun damage around it that probably also is involved. So um, local therapies would be like cryotherapy or even curatage where we take the rough area off and then freeze it or uh -huh. do something else. Uh -huh. um, so those would be local therapies. And then field cancerization or field treatment is where we do the whole area that's sun damaged. So you could do face, you could do chest, you could do scalp, you could do hands and arms. Um, and that you treat everything that you see. And there's mm -hmm. lots of different field cancerization options, but blue light is one of them where we treat the entire chest at once. The chemical knows what cells to go into because it's only going into the dividing cells. The ones that can divide within that three hour time frame are being uptaked by the chemical. And then those are the ones that light up and react and now that you have red little areas. So those are all the sun damaged spots. So that's really cool because if you're just freezing just that one spot, you're only treating that one spot. And if you saw on my chest, I have all those little red marks that weren't coming up as scaly patches yet, but that needed some attention. And so by doing the blue light, I was able to get a bunch of spots that I didn't know needed help, right? Yeah, the thought is that it can reduce your likelihood of the actinic keratosis to transition by sometimes up to 75%. So it really reduces your risk. It is something if you continue to get more sun, you have to repeat. So I don't mm -hmm. know if you've ever done your chest before. I have. Um, but you know, every couple years or so, you repeat the process and get rid of any of the sun damage. I mean, living here, it's tough because I mean, you go to your car and you get sun exposure. So. Yeah. So um, I guess we could move into that, going to your car and getting sun exposure. Sunscreens have to be one of the most you know, important things you can do to help prevent yeah, so these skin cancers. Prevention wise, very, very important. So um, several things you can do for prevention. One, sunscreen. Mm -hmm. um, two, hats and sun protective clothing. Um, three, you can avoid peak hours of the sun. So trying to do your exercise early or late so that you're not getting peak sun. Um, and then there's HelioCare, which we have here that also can help. Um, it's a strong antioxidant, so it can help support your body's ability to repair itself. Mm -hmm. So you still get the actinic, but then your body has more antioxidants to help scavenge free radicals and get rid of the damage. So this is this product. We sell it here in the office. Um, let's go into this a little. You said that real quick. So it's a vitamin. Yeah. That you can take daily. Right. You can take it more more than once a day if needed. Uh huh. So, so is this for the person that goes to Hawaii? So here, I mean, we get sun all the time. So here we might need it every day. Um, but, you know, places that are very sunny, um, like Hawaii, if you know you're going to be out all day, then you take one in the morning and then take one at noon um, to help with the sun protection aspect. You still have to wear sunscreen. It doesn't replace sunscreen and protective clothing. Like, ideally, if you're me, you go out, like, with a full rush guard and, like, all the stuff. So... Um, it protects the skin that's exposed. So pro covering the area is more important, but this is like an additive. Mm -hmm. And then you mentioned sunscreen, which 
a lot of people have gotten the memo. They know that they're supposed to wear sunscreen, but I think what they still are not getting is that they need to reapply the sunscreen. Mm -hmm. Every two hours, at least. Every two hours, at least. So I put sunscreen on, on my way to work, like before I, I get in the car to go to work and mm -hmm. I'm leaving for work, you know, depending on the day, but like 7.30, that's how um, much I care about not getting more cancers. And I will put it on my hands and I will put it on my arms, whatever's exposed um, when I leave. And then if I were to go out for lunch, which I don't usually do, but if I were, I would put it on again. So I know that seems crazy to a lot of people, but if you're one of us, like us fair skinned people who keep getting these little actinic precancers or have had a basal cell or a squamous cell, then that's what we have to do. It's just part of the gig that, you know, we've got this wonderful, charming personality and all sorts of fun stuff with this Irish skin, but we also got this Irish skin. So, or Scottish or English or Dutch or German or whatever, you're just fair. So you gotta, you gotta suck it up and wear the sunscreen, right? Every right, two so hours. The sunscreen, reapply every two hours. Ideal for like women, you have like the powder sunscreen that you can reapply with. There's the HelioCare and the HelioCare Advanced. So the difference between that is the HelioCare just has that fern, that cyanioxidant fern. Mm -hmm. And then the Advanced has the nicotinamide, um, which is vitamin B3 that reduces the risk of squamous cell um, and basal cell. So this one has that in it too. She, she goes really fast. I'm gonna say that one more time. There's two versions that we sell here in the office. One is for the people like you guys, if you're listening, if you care enough about this acting and keratosis thing that we're talking about, you need the advanced version. And then if you're, if you just want, you know, you're just going to Hawaii you're, and you're young and you don't want to get sunburnt as much and you want to be able to heal from sun exposure than the regular, the regular one. Okay. So there's that. Now you, you specifically asked for me to bring these two sunscreens out. Why in particular do you like these sunscreens? Um, for actinic keratosis specifically, um, these have a study to that showed that you reduce the um, development of actinic keratosis with this particular sensory because it has DNA repair enzymes, so it can actually help to repair the damage um, that is within an actinic keratosis, so you're more likely to clear on your own instead of us having to do any form of treatment to them. So these two are nice, the, um, the ageless one has anti-aging, so it's also tinted, so more for maybe a female patient. And then there's um, the Actinica one, which is the orange one, and that one is more for men or females that want untinted and don't care about any anti-aging ingredient aspect. So I'm gonna reverse that again. DNA enzyme repair. So what she was saying that, ha that occurs naturally in your body when you're younger, you know, your, your cells are repairing themselves. So I said, wait, I never knew that an actinic keratosis could go away on its own. Um, this sunscreen is kind of helping that, adding to that process of that, that cell repairing itself so that maybe you don't have to have liquid nitrogen or you don't have to have the blue light. Um, it's a really nice cosmetically elegant sunscreen too. I use the tinted one um, yeah, every, every day. The untinted, like the yeah, and, and if you have a little bit of redness, it just kind of tones that down too. Mm -hmm. So highly recommend that. And then this, um, right now we're doing a promotion where if you buy two of the Elta sunscreens, um, Elta MD sunscreens, you get this sheer sunscreen for listening today. Elta has an excellent brand too. Um, yeah, I wear Elta every day personally. I mean, I don't have actinic keratosis, so I don't necessarily need the DNA repair aspect of the ISIN. So I've always worn Elta. Like the, um, I love the physical one is like my favorite one because it's a little tinted, so I don't have to wear makeup or anything. Um, and it's got a high percentage of, of 41, zinc. Yeah. 40, 41 percent. Um, SPF. SPF. But the zinc, I think, is maybe 20. I don't know. Okay. So, so Elta MD uh, was nice enough to kind of help us out with this. So you get a sheer sunscreen when you buy two Elta MDs um, and they have a, a large like portfolio of products. So I personally use the Elta MD um, lotion for my arms and legs on a daily basis. If I was going out walking or something like outside, I would probably use the sport version um, on my whole body. And then I will use the clear sometimes on my face if I've already reapplied this or if I've already used the ISDIN in the morning, um, like a, in an afternoon or evening walk 
early evening i mean when the sun's out nowadays with daylight savings it's it's light later so we got to be even more careful did we cover everything are there any questions from we could talk about we did like the in-office treatments we could do the home treatments oh yeah let's talk about like the home fast. yes let's talk about the home you want me to talk really fast again <laughs> oh, i'm going to slow you down if i get confused so so you guys we talked about blue light which is an in-office treatment that's the one that's the field therapy you can treat your face neck um, chest, um, arms, only hands. Only one of those in a day. Only can... one per day because it's a lot of recovery, <laughs> right? But that would do face, we... neck, arms in the same day, but you can do those areas, yeah. Then we talked about, you know, individual, like treating one actinic keratosis with a cryotherapy, right? They're going to spray. And I just real quick want to touch on that. You you spray the site um, and it, it stinks when it gets sprayed. Mm -hmm. And then oftentimes it will blister up the next day. Mm -hmm. And then the idea is that that's going to blister and you should leave it as like a scab on your skin. You want to apply or do you, do you recommend putting off four on those? Yeah. Or? So you, you spray it. It's about negative 300 Fahrenheit. So it's extremely cold and creates a localized frostbite, mm -hmm. which actually crystallizes the keratinocyte. So it kills the precancer itself. Uh -huh. um, so then some people um, itch immediately after some people feel like it's sore, but it's just mm -hmm. pretty common um, yeah. to have afterwards. Um, some people blister, some people blister a lot, some people don't blister at all and just have redness and swelling. The skin will then exfoliate. When you're in that exfoliating phase where there's like a little scab, then some aquaphor or Vaseline is fine. Um, and then that usually lasts about seven days or so for that whole process. Then it's like a flat pink area that you want to sun protect really well. Mm -hmm. And sometimes those sites come back and it doesn't mean that you didn't do it right. So the surrounding, <laughs> the surrounding area is also kind of damaged field. So cryotherapy is a local treatment. So I treated the one area that you can see, but the surrounding skin can have it. Or sometimes it can be that the cells were deeper and you need to freeze a little harder. We try to balance because it can leave a little white scar. You try to balance not freezing so hard that you create a big white area right. um, to treating enough that you get it all. So yeah. that's a delicate balance. So sometimes it does take more than one spray. That's my defense for the providers in the office because sometimes like a patient will say, you know, they didn't, they, they didn't treat it right. And I'm like, well, like sometimes just right what you said. It. Sometimes it could be that you had two or sometimes she's, she's in this like delicate spot of not wanting to leave a, a, a white scar. So if she treats too heavy, then you could get a scar if, if she treats you know, sometimes you could treat the right amount and it it's just, there's still cells under there that are stronger than that liquid nitrogen. So that's my stuff on liquid nitrogen. Now there's a third type of treatment that is one that you prescribe and we send home with a patient. Right. What's, what's that? So typically for those, those are people that have fair amount of sun damage. So not, I wouldn't typically prescribe it to just one. We would usually just freeze that if you have just one. Then at home, you can do field cancer education treatment, similar to how blue light's done, where you treat an entire area. Sometimes we do full face. Sometimes we do like little palm sized areas at once, so there's not too much to recover from. But there's lots of different options in that category of um, either topical chemotherapy or topical immune boosting treatments. Mm -hmm. So the most common one is um, 5 fluorouracil or Epidex. Um, that one's 5%, but there's other ones of that, Tolac is 4% and then Karak is 0.5%. Mm -hmm. Typically, I'm like a go big or go home, you got precancers, we're doing Epidex kind yeah, of person, but there's it. other options right. that are a little gentler if needed. I didn't realize that there was gentler ones. Yeah, Dr. O'Neill's also a go big or go home. Uh, okay. <laughs> we're so. both, if we see them, better to get rid of them. Um, yeah. So they cause scabbing sores, blistering, similar to what you showed in your PDT picture, but you would use it topically. And you can use it once to twice a day for two to four weeks, depending on how much sun damage is there. So your doctor or provider would look at your skin and then prescribe it in a certain way based on what amount we think you need. That can be pretty, um, a, a strong reaction. At least I've had very strong reactions with Effudex um, when I've done it in the past. Um, and it's, I find it's kind of like a, it's an interesting, um, it's a way to have like a sort of a deformity and see how the rest of the world sees you because you are you're scabbed, scabbed really gnarly scabbed and um it's it's not pleasant but 
afterwards your skin feels like a little baby's bum and it's really nice and i will throw caution out to those people who are waiting to do you know their their home treatment um, if you have to do your face be really careful not to get too much stuff like around your nose right here where that's my accumulates. where it accumulates and the first couple days that you use this cream you don't see anything and you're like no, I maybe need to slap some more on it don't it's like, like that, yeah. in a couple of days <laughs> it's gonna be showing and you want to you know, follow what I'm saying and not get too much caught up in any of those little crevices. Yep, and that one in particular, it's a chemotherapy um, cream. So, um, fluorouracil is also used IV to treat breast cancer and other cancers. It's an actual chemotherapy. It works with DNA replication, so it actually goes into rapidly dividing cells and prevents those cells from dividing, and then there's cell death, which leads to those redness, scabs, and crusts that you see. So. Um, it doesn't light up or treat non pre cancer. So if you have a bad rash when you're using it, then it probably needed to be done because there's lots of pre cancer cells that it found. Right, right. So we covered a lot today. What I want you guys to get out of this is that, you know, actinic keratoses are not the end of the world. There's lots of different treatments that, that you can, you know, do to take care of them. If you've started to get them, you need to be practicing more sun protection, like wearing your sunscreen daily, reapplying sunscreen, wearing clothes that are covered, staying out of the sun during peak hours if, if possible, and maybe adding this supplement called HelioCare Advanced. Those are, those are the preventative things you can do. In the office, we can do liquid nitrogen, we can do blue light, and we can send you home with a prescription to help you with all of these things. Um, if you are sitting at home and you have, you know, three little scaly patches and we can't get you in for a month, that's okay. You're going to be okay. We're going to, we're going to get you taken care of. You can call us, make an appointment. Um, you will be all right. Just keep on top of it. I feel like there's like three types of people. There's a person that's over anxious about these things and has to get it taken care of. There's a person like me that's kind of like, uh, like I'll, I'll get to it, you know, appropriately. So, and then there's a person who ignores it and pretends like it's not there and doesn't take care of it. So let's be more like Carrie, <laughs> right? Anything exactly. else that we forgot? No, we have, um, I think we have on our Instagram, we have the blog or the, what, I don't know, story? What do we call it? The post? The post. 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 Mm -hmm. post. The post. Yes. That has um, all the different topical options. Excellent. And then we'll do a post that has all the different in-office treatments. And then we have a blog post written that you can read that has both. I'm so glad you mentioned that. So if you're sitting there and you're like, ah, oh, she talks too fast and Carrie didn't wrap, Carrie didn't review it enough. So it's all on our, like in the blog post, that's a really good reference resource. You guys on our website, there's a, a list of blog posts. They're fascinating reads if you're into dermatology. So you could probably type in actinic keratosis and this, like the one that Dr. Llewellyn did about these would come up and have everything that we just talked about. And then there's also posts on Instagram. So sorry to reiterate that again, but thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we really appreciate you and we appreciate you being our patients. Give us a call if you need to get in for a skin check.